And this is where taking a look at what are the, the religions are going to turn to powder, but their mystical teachings are what we're going to hold on to. And these are the laws that we're going to talk about. The mystical laws that have governed this universe and will continue to govern it long after the evolution in the earth keeps spinning past this era. Because these are the laws that govern the universe here and out there. These are the governing laws that keep the orbits operating here and out there. And these are the same laws that keep your biology operating. So we have to reconstruct how we think of ourselves. We have to understand that the next level of theology is all about our nature and aligning our nature to the cosmic nature. And that's the nature of the divine. It's called organic divinity. And this is how we begin to understand the laws. The nature of organic theology, which is what I'm presenting in my next book, is that we need to understand that the nature of our nature is exactly how the organization of the divine expresses itself in the laws that follow our biology are the laws that follow nature, are the laws that in fact are the nature of God. So that's one way we're going to kind of approach this. You know, I want to turn the, I want to turn the um, centuries back and take this from a different <laughs> point, of, point of view, um, a different perspective. I was reading the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. And you know, it's, it's filled with great adventures in the book of Genesis and, and um, the story of Noah. And the, it's the great classics in the, in the Old Testament. And of course, the, the flood and um, Moses. The best characters are in the Old Testament. Hannah, bless you. And um, one day, last two years ago, I thought to myself, I think this really happened. I think some version of this actually really happened. And what I mean by that is, if we go back thousands of years, and I want you, we can't imagine this, but try your best. Try your very, very best to, to it, I mean, here in Arizona might be a place where you could go out into the quietness of some place where you, for even a few minutes, hopefully you wouldn't hear a plane go up or, or a car, but you could get as quiet as possible. So even for a few seconds, you could possibly imagine what it would be like to live on the earth where there was no technology, where there was nothing, there was nothing. There was nothing but you, the tribe, the, the, the sheep and the goats that you lived with, and that was the world. That was the whole world. So let's imagine 4,000, 5,000 years ago, and that was the world. And in that that mindset, that mindset is between you and that world. Doubt hadn't been created. The scientific mind hadn't been created. Nothing like that had been created at all. So it wouldn't occur to you to say, this isn't reasonable. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. You didn't think like that yet. You didn't even have a way to think like that yet. It, it wouldn't even occur to you to think like that. The way you thought was, what is between me 
and heaven. Nothing. It's just me standing on this earth and God, where are you? That's all. That's it. There's nothing else. The purpose of my life is, is what, what is the purpose of my life? What do you want? Because it, nothing else would make any sense now. From that point of view, you would proportion yourself in such a way that that world had all the power and you had this. So all the power would be in the invisible world and you would have this much. So the world would be whatever this world, it would never occur to you that of course you could hear this world. Of course that world could talk to you because you didn't have any power. That world did. So who were you to say this world didn't exist? It wouldn't occur to you that you could have the authority to even have such a thought. You know, think about a little pissant. You wouldn't even dare have such a thought. So when Abraham looks up and he sees two men come down and they're angels, he says, go take them in my tent and feed them. They probably were physically angels. Why? Because at that, in that time, doubt did not exist. And so the, the consciousness of the time would have allowed for the light of the divine, the angelic kingdom, to actually densify into matter. Because it was so close. It was, they, the, those two worlds were so close. In order for me to withdraw from that world, I have to doubt it exists. If I don't doubt, I'm very close to it. So the veil is very, very thin.